guys, it's Reagan, and today I am filming my July wrap-up. So, the month of July was actually surprisingly a pretty good reading month for me. I read a total of six things, and quite a few of those things were actually quite large novels, so... Yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started. The first couple of books I don't actually have in physical form with me because I am at my parents' house. The first one being is Elizabeth is Missing. Now this was a gift to me from my boyfriend and this is a kind of a psychological thriller book. It follows a much older woman named Elizabeth who is who has dementia. And throughout the novel, she's slowly becoming less able to function and remember things clearly. Like she has a very, very short-term memory and she's forgetting everything around her day to day, hour to hour. But while she's forgetting, she's starting to remember um, her past and she's kind of reflecting on a very important time in her past and so they kind of correlate together into one giant mystery. Uh, I will say the perspective of this novel was very interesting. It was it was sad, but also kind of cool to read from someone who was so unreliable and so forgetful. But at the same time, I found the book to be a little dry and the actual mystery to be pretty obvious. And while the mystery wasn't obvious to Elizabeth, it's pretty obvious to anyone, in my opinion, who's actually like reading the book. So overall, I ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars. It was really good. It just wasn't that great. The next book I read I absolutely adored and it was Tatiana and Alexander. This is the second book to the Bronze Horseman trilogy. The Bronze Horseman trilogy is an adult romance historical fiction series. It follows, um, it's set in Russia, at least partially, and it follows a young naive girl named uh, Tatiana and a strong handsome soldier named Alexander. The first book I really enjoyed, I ended up having some issues with it, especially with the relationship and the power balance. However, I found the second book to be like better than the first. It was just interesting because I felt like both of the characters developed so much more and independently from each other, which made them more whole, at least in my mind, and more dynamic. So I ended up really liking the second book. I absolutely flew through it. I was addicted to it. I loved the story. It was just so good and so gripping and like kept you on the edge of your seat because there's so much action within this romance historical fiction story. A lot more action than you would probably guess. So I ended up really loving this. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I will say this novel is very adult. It has a lot of sex scenes. So if, just a warning to younger viewers, but if you're interested in some sort of romance novel, I'm not usually a huge fan, but I really like these books and I am excited to pick up the third one. I would pick them up if it sounds interesting to you. Plus, the Russia setting is pretty great. It's during World War II. It's so good. The next novel I completed I have with me, and it is Wolf in White Van by John Darnell. This was nominated for the National Book Award last year, and it was very interesting and also very short. It follows a man with a very severe face disfigurement, and basically, um, he runs a mail-in Dungeons and Dragons game, and the start of the novel, two people who play this mail-in game end up taking the game a little too far in real life. So this novel is about him dealing with that, but it's much more about him dealing with basically his deformity and coming to terms with it in his own ways. It has a lot of flashbacks. It has a very interesting style and narration. It's very much a stream of consciousness, so much where sometimes I would kind of get lost within the story. It'd be a little confusing. I'd have to like pick up threads here and there, but I always got on track pretty quickly. Um, but I, I really liked it. I didn't love it per se. I ended up giving it like a four out of five stars. It was really good and really entertaining and interesting, but it's definitely not a book where I'm just like, yes, this is everything, but I thought it was really good. The next thing I read was a graphic novel and it is East of West Volume 1. And this was so good. I absolutely loved this. This is definitely going to be a, a graphic novel series that I am heavily invested in. This is definitely difficult to describe. It is a sci-fi western, but the actual plot of the series is definitely laid out throughout the first volume of this, meaning you're kind of confused until the end. But it's so good. And I literally don't want to tell you anything because I feel like when you find the reveal, it's just like amazing. But I will say the art in this is absolutely stunning. It is really graphic and violent, but it's just so good and I'm so excited to move on to volume two. Like, I really like this. I gave it a five out of five stars. It was 
amazing. Next thing I read I also absolutely adored, like I loved this book so much more than I was anticipating and that is The Queen of the Tierling by Erica Johansson. So going into this novel I kind of had not low expectations but I was always really hesitant because it seemed like people either loved it or they had a lot of issues with it and they thought it was boring. I am in the camp of love. I flew through this book. It is so amazing. It basically is set and an alternate uh, futuristic but like regressed historical society. I say that meaning like it's set in our world but it's set in the future but instead of the future progressing into like sci-fi like you would origin like you would naturally think it's regressed in sort of this medieval-esque period and it's so cool and there's little easter eggs that hint to um, the past, our current present. It follows our main character Kelsia and she's basically just turned 17 and she's gonna go try to reclaim her throne and basically run her kingdom and like fix all the problems. This novel I will say which maybe is why some people find it boring has it's very politically based meaning like it's all about court politics and maneuvering and working with people and all things like that which is personally something I absolutely adore. There's also not much of a romance in this first book, however I feel like it's kind of hinted at and I feel like something will appear later, but it's definitely not a main component. This novel is really about Kelsey, 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 I don't know how to say her name. It's about our main character like gaining her kingdom, figuring out how to rule, what kind of ruler she wants to be, and it's just so good. I loved it and I'm so excited to move on to the second book, The Invasion of the Tearling, which just recently came out because I know I'm going to love that one too. And the last book I read this month was another beautiful book and it is Uprooted by Naomi Novak. This was really good. It wasn't as good as The Queen of the Tearling, but I really enjoyed it. This is another really hyped up book on booktube. This is a fantasy standalone novel and I think it kind of straddles a line between adult and young adult. I don't really know where it fits. It could really be either. Does it matter? Probably not. <laughs> but this is set in a very interesting landscape. Essentially it is a fantasy world where this valley is surrounded by this wood and the wood is enchanted and magical and kind of evil and so it kind of creeps up on the villagers, eats them, tries to absorb them and tries to grow. Um, there is a wizard that lives in this valley called the dragon and he lives in a tower and he requires one thing for his services of protecting the valley and that is a female from the valley every 10 years and our main character is picked to be that servant at the beginning of this book and the story unfurls from there. This novel is a lot more than the synopsis, that's basically how it started. I enjoyed this book for the most part. I flew through the beginning and I flew through the end. The middle kind of lost it for me a little bit for like 75 pages but it definitely picked up for me and ultimately I liked where it went and how it ended. It definitely felt like one complete novel which is always a relief going into a fantasy standalone especially lately because some things are marketed as standalones that aren't. So this is definitely a standalone and it was so good. Like it was like really magical and enchanted and just kind of had this great fairy tale esque feeling towards it. It was just like, I don't know, it had great atmosphere and it was just a really fun ride. Plus this cover is absolutely stunning. So overall I really liked it. I'd say I give it like a 4.5, 4.25 out of 5 stars. It was really good. Check it out if you're interested. Guys, those are the six books I read in the month of July. Let me know down below your favorite book you read this month. And yeah, I will see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!